Water moves by buckets and squirt guns through creeks and lakes. Sylvia Lovato is Senior Director of Products for PBS Kids Digital. These kids are getting soaked for one of her projects. So this project is actually part of a grant that we received from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting that is about immersive experiences, learning experiences for kids. And that we are working on a digital game at PBS, but we are also working with stations to bring the curriculum to the ground, to have a game where kids are playing with each other, running around, moving. PBS Kids Digital chose three PBS member stations to create pilot games. WFSU's webmaster, Trisha Monahan, designed this one. Well, the goal behind today was get kids to think about ways that water moves. We wanted them to build their own system as a team to move water from the central location to each of their team buckets to fill up their bucket, and that would be how they would win. I pulled one of these, one of your games that you were playing, and you'll <laughs> see how similar it is to the real system. Jamie Shaker works for the City of Tallahassee Utilities. We pump the water out of the ground, we treat it at one of our treatment facilities, and then we pump it out to the distribution system. And you all were the distribution system today. You carried water from the pool to the buckets. But we use pipes in the ground to carry that water from the wells to your homes. In this game, the big tub is like the Florida aquifer. What happens is that as rain falls on the ground, it gets into lakes and streams, it slowly percolates through the aquifer. So it acts like a huge filter. And by the time it gets to the area where we pump it out of the ground, it's very clean water. The network of pipes and treatment facilities bringing water to our homes is a system. The game is meant to teach systems thinking. It's a skill that will help kids later on in the workplace. It's really important when you are making a computer program or a game to be commercially available that you think about the whole project as you try to solve specific parts of it. Is a we have to know what we're going to do first. Hey. 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 Then rather trying to just create one little feature of the program in isolation. So this transfers very well to that. Each team starts with 12 points. And they have to decide whether or not they're going to work together with the points or they're going to you know, try and individually do it. Ways to get points involve the ducks in the pool. They're all worth varying points. There you go. And then there's two types of puzzles over there having to do with the water cycle and the way water moves in Tallahassee. And they get various points for that. And then they come spend the points here. And then they run and use things and build things to fill their buckets up with water. We really want kids to think about the different ways in which they can solve problems. Like when you're looking at a large system, it's really important to have the whole picture in your mind and not try to solve like specific pieces of it in isolation. We've been looking at one system that brings water from the aquifer to our taps. This in turn is nested into the larger watershed system. Engineers make fancy words for pretty simple ideas. And so they might call an area where all the water runs to a low spot. The fancy word they use is a watershed. But really all it is is an area like a bowl. Karen Rubin is with Tallahassee's TAP program. TAP stands for Think About Personal Pollution. She puts powders on her watershed model that represent fertilizer, pesticides, and loose dirt. Here's what happens to all of that when it rains. This is Munson Slough. All of the stormwater runoff from FSU, FAMU, downtown Tallahassee, TCC, all of that rain from a very concrete, heavy area drains into the Munson system. This is where Munson Slough drains into Lake Henrietta. Now, around 45% of the basin is in the city limits. So obviously you have more pavement, you have more impervious surface. So that runoff is eventually reaching Lake Munson. Johnny Richardson works for Leon County, monitoring its lakes and streams. For the water, as you can see from the dam, you know, at times the water will, will be up to our, our necks in water. So when the water gets high, the algae will get dragged out into the, into the, up into this area. And as you can see, this is still makes the algae just dried up. So we can just break it apart and see how very, you know, how friable it is and how fibrous. Nitrogen from fertilizer feeds algae. And other pollutants make the lake unsafe for swimming and its fish unsafe for eating. But Lake Munson isn't the final stop on the rain train. Now at least a portion of that water will end up in Wakulla Springs in approximately 20 days. 
So they've done dye, tra dye trace studies a couple of years ago, and they, that's what they've determined. And there's been a great deal of care and concern about the status and the health of Wakulla Springs. And in fact, there have been um, bird species, the limkin, that have been forced off of Wakulla Springs because their source of food has disappeared, the apple snail. Excess nutrients may have caused invasive hydrilla to spread and encroach on areas where apple snails lay eggs. What percentage of these nutrients drained from Lake Munson? There was a study done a couple of years ago, and they said that approximately 11 percent of the nitrogen, nitrate specifically, from the sinking streams, which there are a couple, ends up in, in Wakulla Springs. What percentage of that comes from, from Munson? I, I don't know. That is a Wakulla River smoke mullet. The Wakulla River flows from Wakulla Springs. A 2012 report from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection lists the upper Wakulla as impaired. The lower river, where that mullet was caught, is listed as fairly healthy. The Wakulla joins with the St. Marks River, which drains into the Gulf of Mexico on the St. Marks National Wildlife Refuge. Leon County has been working to clean up Lake Munson, but its best hope lies with the people who live north of it in the watershed. Education is, I think, a very big part of water quality in general. Uh, people need to know where their water is going. I know I recently went to a conference and they said that 80% of the people did not know where their tap water came from. And I'm sure that number is roughly the same for, well, where does that tap water go once it goes down the sink? So I think it's very important to, to educate adults and children. And it would be better to start with the kids. Learning water systems would be a start. In the fictional water system of our game, the yellow team is first to fill their bucket. They explain how. So I bought this bucket, and then I figured out that you can like tip the pool over and make the water go in the bucket, and then you splash the bucket water into it. And that cost me a lot of I was happy with how it turned out. The kids seem to have a lot of fun, and water and kids always go well together. Trisha plans to stage this game at other locations. For more information, visit wfsu.org slash watermoves. For WFSU-TV, I'm Rob Diaz, The Villegas.